everyone, I'm Shabani Gharat and I have arrived in Doha, Qatar for the FIFA Football World Cup final match as Argentina takes on two times champion and defending champions France. This tournament that took place from November 20th to December 18th had 32 national teams from five confederations playing right here in Doha and it provided them a great opportunity to create history and that is what has happened over the past one month. But with an event at such a scale, it also provides opportunities for big brands and global sponsors to engage with their audience, with their consumers, that too at scale. Considering that a FIFA Football World Cup only happens once in four years and this one especially after two years of the gloom and the pandemic. So I'm getting you all the brand action from the ground and what it means for the India market as well. The 22nd edition of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar saw 32 countries fight for the coveted crown from November 20th, but the race finally came down to two teams. Argentina, which played France at the finals at the Lucelle Stadium in Qatar on Sunday, December 18th, with fans from all over the world travelling to Doha to watch their favourite players live in action. The FIFA World Cup is a great example of how passion and a sport event can capture the imagination of the planet. That's why brands love the World Cup. You get to meet consumers where their passion point is and tapping into this passion makes your campaign social and engaging rather than static and one way. Plus, FIFA World Cup is arguably the biggest global event in sports. And traditionally, billions of viewers watch the World Cup and as they concentrate on what's happening on the pitch, the names of some of the biggest companies flash behind players on a rolling technicolored loop. Budweiser, Visa, Coca-Cola, Qatar Airways, Adidas, McDonald's, Wanda, Hyundai Kia, Baiju's and Vivo. FIFA President Gianni Infantino recently shared at a news conference that the organization has earned a record of $7.5 billion in revenue through commercial deals tied to 2022 World Cup, $1 billion more than what it earned from the 2018 World Cup. And during the next cycle, building up to 2026 World Cup held in United States, Mexico and Canada, Infantino forecasts a revenue of $11 billion. Now, when it comes to brands and sponsorship, let us first understand who sponsors the FIFA Football World Cup. Now, FIFA has several sponsorship tiers, but primarily there are FIFA partners, there are FIFA World Cup sponsors, and then there are regional sponsors. Now, FIFA partners are the ones who get global rights and FIFA branding across all branches. And these are the brands that get to engage with uh, the, the fans and the audience coming to watch the FIFA. FIFA Football World Cup at scale. Now, this year's FIFA Football World Cup 2022 has seven such partners. There is Adidas for sportswear and footwear. Then, of course, there is Coca-Cola. There is Visa. There is the Wanda Group, which is the conglomerate partner. There is Hyundai and Kia Motors for automotive. There is Qatar Energy for oil and gas. And then Qatar Airlines, which is the official journey to Doha. I caught up with one such partner on ground, Visa. A worldwide partner of FIFA since 2007, Visa is the official payment service partner of FIFA events around the world. The partnership provides Visa with worldwide exclusive access to experiences at FIFA World Cup, FIFA Women's World Cup and over 40 other FIFA competitions. Brand Visa came alive at the World Cup through various activations. We started uh, planning this uh over four years ago. Mm -hmm. So some of the team that is currently working here already was working in Russia in preparation for this World Cup. So it's usually a, a four to five year cycle. And, uh, you know, uh, Visa came on board as the official payments technology partner for the FIFA World Cup back in the early 2000s, around 2007. 2007. Yes, 2007. Um, what is the kind of evolution in terms of, you know, acceptance for the game of football that you have seen in the region over the past so many years? And we are sitting in 2022. Yes, yeah, so um, I've had the pleasure of working on this since our, the beginning of our partnership with FIFA. And we've seen an unprecedented growth of uh, football in, in Asia Pacific. 
And then if you kind of drill it down a little bit more into the Indian subcontinent, um, mm -hmm. comparing it just with four years ago, uh, I'm really happy to kind of see a very positive evolution. Mm -hmm. Just to put things into perspective, um, according to, Qatar, to the Qatari government, Indians during the group stage were the second largest of foreigners, foreign people coming into Qatar after Saudi Arabia. So wow. that kind of really demonstrates how football has evolved over the last four years yeah. and how Indians are now behind this, this sport. But how was this partnership brought alive for the India market? We did consumer promotions both in India as well as Bangladesh because we also handled South Asia. And we also did uh, client promotions and match screenings. So if I can talk about the first one, what we did is we did promotions with consumers who were asked to pay with their visa card. And in a certain specified period, the person who uh, did the most transactions, they won a full uh, package to the FIFA finals. So we had one winner from Bangladesh and two winners from India. Apart from this, we also ran a contest on social and digital media where we invited consumers to take part in a game where they had to guess the football star. Winners of this either won actual FIFA merchandise like a match replica football or they won other different merchandise and they also won a chance to come and watch a live screening of the match in India. Then there are World Cup sponsors. Now, these brands include global rights as well, but they are restricted to the World Cup. So, the winners of this particular activity conducted by Vigo India standing right behind me. So, how was the experience of watching great, this? Great, 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 great. And what a match it was. So exciting, nail biting till the final minutes of the match. What was your experience? I mean, I really wanted France to win, but it was a really great comeback from France. I really wanted them to you know, score one more at the end, but you know, it's, it's a final, you win some, you lose some, but it's fine. Okay, great, now, great experience. Yes, now tell us more about you. Give it a shot, Yeah. What did you guys really do and you know, what was this whole uh, experience like? Yeah, it was a great experience. So, I've been playing for football for the past 10 years. I was in Germany and I recorded a few videos and I just came out to know the contest on the Instagram stories. And I thought, why not give it a shot, right? So I just uploaded the video, tagged my friends, and I thought, if this works out, it will be a dream come true. So I just wanted it to work out so badly, and it did. And what an amazing match you also saw, yeah. so definitely. Dream come true, and what a dream final. Also telling us more about this particular activity, we have Mayank Prabhakar, who is the head of digital marketing at Vivo India. Mayank, tell us uh, about the concept uh, behind uh, activity of yours, how did you come up with it and uh, why did you think of you know getting the fans and uh, you know the winners to the final match? So I tell you what, uh, see Vivo is always about uh, what our brand values, right? It's all about joy, we live the joy, right? And sports is all about having a joy in it, right? Here are the winners, you can see their faces, how excited they are, the joy which comes with it. And if we are associated with people and there is a match, nothing better than a final, right? Hence we decided let's do it, let's have winners on the road, let them give it a fair chance. It's not limited to only Vivo, it's just to the entire Indian population of them. Let's come, enjoy, have, live the joy together, come, let's celebrate. And I think that's what's the objective. I'm very glad that we have such a huge engagement. Yeah, and seven winners, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, right? Seven winners are over here in... Yeah, seven Europe. winners are there who are traveling with us. There are another thousand winners who are a lot of FIFA official merchandise from us. So, uh, you know, the best thing about football is that it is all over the world. In India, while yes, you might say cricket is very big, but there is a sizable population that is a football fan or probably turns into a football fan when, when a World Cup happens uh, after every four years. So we, as I talked about the Give It A Shot campaign, I think it ran on Instagram and, and we were able to get entries from all across the country. And it was not only people, you wouldn't believe that we had even housewives, you know, playing with different things at home and who, who said that this is how I give it a shot. So it was not just, you know, young boys who would be, you know, playing with the football. It was anything and everything that went. So, Shivani, I don't know if you know this, but uh, since 2014, we have expanded across the globe. We are now in 60 countries. We have about 400 million people using Vivo phones across the world. 
So like football, we also transcend geographies. Like football brings people together, Vivo also brings people together. So it's literally match made in heaven. And now when it comes to regional sponsorships, if you recall, Amul made headlines becoming the first regional sponsor of the Portugal football team. Before that, it was also the first regional sponsor of the Argentinian football team. Now, with this, Amul gets access to all of the match archives and has rights to use the footballer images across its branding, products, packaging till 2023. So there is no doubt that FIFA World Cup 2022 happening in Qatar offered brands and marketers a unique opportunity to engage with their consumers and audience during peak months. But is it worth avoiding or dismissing all the controversies surrounding this event? We find out on the other side of this break. But with so many restrictions in place, what does it take for a brand to come alive during this mega sporting event and engage with its fans and audience? Well, it takes, as a sponsor, um, obviously there's a lot of a brand, uh, a brand play to it, but for us, it takes a lot of responsibility because we have to set up the acceptance infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now I have to say, Doha, one city, eight stadiums around the city is a lot easier than previous World Cups when you've had to kind of fly between cities. So in that perspective, um, we'll never see a World Cup mm. with the level of infrastructure and the level of proximity that we've seen this year. We cannot ignore the fact that FIFA World Cup 2022 has been one of the most scrutinized World Cup in the history of football World Cups. Uh, what uh, did it create any obstacles at all as a global sponsor? Uh, you know that Vivo was as a brand custodian. What What is your opinion? What is your say on I, this? I think uh, I think football is a great connector, hmm. right? And it connects people. It connects cultures and it connects everyone who's associated with it. And if you've been around and, and, and I've uh, seen you go around markets, etc., you might have seen people from different nationalities come together and really uh, you enjoy this in harmony. And you know, if things go right, this might be the most viewed World Cup. You know. Fans from all over the world had come down to watch their favourite players live in action during the FIFA World Cup 2022. So needless to say, even the brands and the global sponsors present on ground had a field day engaging with these fans and also their consumers. In this segment, I get you some action from on ground and how did these brands engage with their consumers at different zones and points set up across the city of Doha. Many brands made a splash on ground with FIFA World Cup capturing the attention of the whole world. Some of them global sponsors and partners, many making most of the opportunity that they had in hand. We visited the fan fest created for fans of football in Doha and saw how many brands interacted and engaged with the much tuned in audience. Believing is magic is what this beautiful red colored coconut at the FIFA World Cup 2022 Fan Fest says. And there are quite a few engagement activities for fans who arrive here. For example, this 360 degree camera right behind me where the fans get to take a chance to take a 360 degree video of themselves. Then there is a very interesting promise booth right here. So it says, that you make, let's say you are supporting Argentina and if Argentina wins the World Cup uh, this time, then I promise I will, like if Argentina wins, I promise I will marry you, I will start running, I will shave my head, I will cut down on social media. So these are the kind of promises that you can make after. Uh, you know, your favorite team wins. And then, there are these drums over here which you can come and play and experience and cheer out loud for your favorite team while you're watching the match and the big screen behind you.
Football World Cup as a nice big set up football field which you can see right behind me. Currently there is not much activity happening over here, nobody is playing a match. But there are a lot of fans gathered over here to watch the match. So to make it comfortable for them, there are large cushions set up so that they can comfortably sit and watch the match and this football field. And then there were many who made a mark without being a sponsor. Take Thomas Hines for example. Thomas Hines dressed in red and white hidden in the crowd and called on football fans to find him for a prize worth more than 10,000 Qatari Rial which is 2,700 US dollars. Barring Messi and Mbappe, Hines was the most looked for name of the season. Hines turned Doha into a huge treasure hunt for visitors and locals alike. Ten thousand Qatari riyal. 
luxury brand Louis Vuitton made a statement at the final match with Deepika Padukone wearing the brand while presenting the FIFA World Cup trophy in a Louis Vuitton trunk. For the fourth consecutive FIFA World Cup tournament, Louis Vuitton has created the trunk to carry the official FIFA World Cup trophy. As soon as I landed in Doha, one of the first things that I wanted to do was to go and purchase jersey of my favourite team that I was cheering for. But unfortunately, jerseys were sold out and I did try multiple stores. But an interesting fact about jerseys is that Nike owned 40.6% share of visibility at the FIFA Football World Cup 2022 with jerseys of 13 out of the 32 national teams that played here. Adidas, a global sponsor at the FIFA Football World Cup 2022 and one of the oldest sponsors of the World Cup had seven teams on board. Qatar World Cup 2022 was one of the most scrutinized World Cup in the history. Yet, when it came to reach, it was a no-brainer with billions of eyeballs on a logo or marketing slogan during a troubled time for the global economy. The boost from the tournament would possibly offset the advertising market's broader weakness.